and necessary element of the Raja Suya Yagnya, the king's inauguration or consecration ceremony. I will show that how the oldest form of this Akshadyuta, as it is described broadly in the Rig Veda, um, was structured. And I will try to show you exactly how the game played between Yudhishthira and Shakuni in the Sabab Harvan was going on. So, ah, so um, the game, um, um, the game Akshadyuta um, was in the Brahmana, in the Brahmana scriptures and in the so-called Shrauta Sutras, which deal with ritual, it became a part of the consecration ceremony, the Rajasuya Yagna, and is here broadly described and in detail in the Taitiriya tradition, uh, which belongs to the Krishna Yajurveda, as you know. And it was actually the elder profane game played in the Sabha, but it was played here in a ritual context. Now it is very uh, interesting why a game of luck is an integral part of um, a so important yagnya like um, the Rajasuya. And when we see the Akshadyuta being a part of the Rajasuya, then we can understand that in the Mahabharata, the game in the Sabha played between Yudhishthira and Shakuni or Yudhishthira and Duryodhana was not a profound play for enjoyment, entertainment or fun, but it was an integral part of the Rajasuya Yagna, which was performed by Yudhishthira at the advice of the Rishi Narada. You know that um, Rishi Narada advised Yudhishthira to perform the Rajasuya and become the most important king of the area. By performing the Rajasuya, Yudhishthira um, changed the balance between Hastinapura and Indraprastha and the already smoldering conflict between the Pandavas and the Kauravas escalated and ultimately led to the war in Kurukshetra. So why was the Akshadyuta, an integral part of the Rajasuya Yagna. The answer given to us by the ancient Indian texts is, it was a part because the king who had received many presents by other kings and vessels, when he became the Maharaja Adiraja, he had to distribute his wealth again. So a ritual Akshadyuta was played and the, the king, in this case Yudhishthira, had to demonstrate the status, the prestige, and the generosity, and he had to distribute his wealth. The game was a part of the ritual, and the event uh, of the game in the public, this is a sabah, with guests invited from all over India, including the Brahmins, who were sitting watching silently, combined the display of prestige and status of the new King Yudhishthira, and served the demonstration of his generosity by the formal distribution of his wealth acquired after his Rajasuya Yagna. The king was formally challenged by his adversaries, and therefore could not decline. Yudhishthira had no possibility to decline the game which was asked by Duryodhana to play with him. So what I want to show is also uh, that Yudhishthira was actually um, a victim of the intrigues of his enemies who knew that he had to play the game as a part of the Rajasuya, and by no means Yudhishthira was guilty, or as it is sometimes said, an addicted gambler. He was not. He was just keeping up 
the dharma. The ritual game um, was, you know, the, rit the actual duta as a ritual game was uh, included in this Rajasula Yagna. And um, the king had to show his presence, to show his richness, and he had to um, give his valuables and his wealth away. The king had to make gifts to other kings and princes and take the challenge of a game of akshas in which he would lose some of his riches. And this is exactly what happened in the Mahabharata. The Rajasuya is associated with the consecration of a king and is a means to establish a king's sovereignty over all other kings in his vicinity. And when Yudhishthira performed the Rajasuya, then actually Duryodhana came the king number two. So this actually in, incited his envy and so on. Um, the Raja Suya is described um, in the Black Yajur Veda, including the Upper Stamba Shauta Sutra, where we have a long description of this uh, Raja Suya. It involved uh, the Soma pressing, a chariot drive of the king, the king shooting arrows from his bow, a symbolic cattle raid, Gavishti, and a ritual game to distribute, distribute wells. And this was all under the supervisions of the Brahmins who actually were the caretakers of this Rajasuya ritual. Yes. So um, here you can see the sources. It is Apastambia Shrauta Sutra and it is the Shatapata Brahmana. Here already the Rajasuya is described. Um, you can see the uh, part of the Rajasuya is um, the pressing of Soma, the Gavishti, a game of luck, Aksha Juta, a chariot race, and so on. Under the supervision of the Brahmins, and this is the reason when um, the game took place in the Sabah, um, the Brahmins were sitting silently and not saying anything, but their presence actually showed that um, the game was a part of this Rajasuya still. So, yeah. Um, you, the other source is uh, Bhattasanali Sanghita, the Shatapat, and Katyayana Shrauta Sutra. There we have the description of this uh, means and the sense and why it should be and so on. And now a very important thing is, since election of kingship or chieftainship was confined only to the members of the clan, the king's competitor in this game had to be his Zajata, a relative. And of course, Duryodhana was a relative of Yudhishthira and Shakuni also was. This is a, a picture of this um, Rajasuya in the Mahabharata. So, so this is exactly what happened in the uh, Sabha Parvan, where the new king Yudhishthira is obliged to participate in the game as a part of his consecration, while his adversary is a relative Sajata, that's Yudhuryodhana, with his maternal uncle Shakuni. So Shakuni was um, the Matula of Duryodhana. And as a Matula, mother's um, brother, he had to look after Duryodhana. So actually, Shakuni did not, nothing wrong. He just helped his nephew through this problem. Nothing here went illegal, nothing was shameful, as all happens according to the ancient rules, rights, and regulation under Brahmanical surveillance. So, <clears throat> a king who considered himself to be the most powerful and fit to be an emperor would perform the ritual. And the king performing this yagna should be accepted as an emperor by all kings throughout the country. 
doing the Rajasuya. Yudhishthira enraged Duryodhana and disturbed the balance between the two states of the Pandavas and the Kauravas. The, can, you can see equilibrium in Hastinapura and Indraprastha. Why this? Uh, Yudhishthira uh, was concerned, felt selfish, and asked, asked Krishna for advice whether should he perform the Rajasuya or should he not? And Krishna answered Yudhishthira, O king, you are learned in the ways of dharma. You are worse, worse of performing the great sacrifice of Rajasuya. Then, hearing this, Yudhishthira sighed and thinking about performing the sacrifice could find no peace. But after reflecting a great deal, he made up his mind to perform the Rajasuya. So Yudhishthira was reluctant because he felt by being the Maharaja Adiraja, he would enrage Duryodhana and a war was waging. So this is the reason Yudhishthira in the beginning, when Narada Rishi told him, he was reluctant and he said, no, I will not do this Rajasuya, but in the end he did. Duryodhana felt envy and hatred after Yudhishthira's consecration and coronation. And Duryodhana, as you all know, was further humiliated when, mistaking water for crystal in Yudhishthira's beautiful palace, wet the seam of his long dress and was laughed at by the princes, by the Pandavas, by Draupadi, mocked him, calling him the blind son of blind parents. Words on which Duryodhana swore revenge. Duryodhana was, as Yudhishthira, not experienced in gambling, but his Matula Shakuni was. And Matula is, uh, the Matula Shakuni is called in the Mahabharata in several places the Aksha Tattva Vid, knowing the essence of gambling. Duryodhana's problem was that he was the eldest son of the elder of the two brothers Pandu and Dhritarashtra. Pandu, the younger brother, only became king because the elder, the Dhritarashtra, was blind. So according to the law of succession, Duryodhana was the one who should have been consecrated as king. And by performing the Rajasuya, Yudhishthira disturbed the fragile equilibrium and actually this led to the war. Shakuni was very bright, and understanding the meaning of the Rajasuya only too well, identified with the humiliation of his sister's son, and devised the plan of the game. Though he is a terrible gambler, Yudhishthira will accept, for he cannot refuse the game. He cannot refuse the game. Shakuni skilled at the game, and being a Sajata of Yudhishthira, suggested to play on his nephew's Duryodhana behalf, which Yudhishthira could not deny without seeming ungenerous, mean, and petty. Had this been a profane game for fun, Yudhishthira could have re refused, of course, but being the game, a part of the Rajasuya, he could not deny. So, this is the reason um, Yudhishthira said, Ahutu aham nani tat ahitam shashvatam vai vartame. I cannot, when I am challenged, I cannot retreat because this is my dharma as a king. Furthermore, the game in the Sabha was seen by the Mahabharata a substitute or replacement of the war itself. The war Yuda is often compared to the Dyuta in the Mahabharata and described as a logic continuation of the game itself. So for example, in the ninth book, it is said Yude Prana Dyuta Abhidevana. In this fight, in this war, 
which is a game played with lives, with persons. So actually, um, when we see um, the game here, um, this is not the game which was played in the Sabah Parvan, I will try to show. And we see um, beautiful Yudhishthira on the right and the cunning Shakuni on the left. Um, but I might say um, the game was definitely different. Let's see how. The oldest reference to the Akshadyuta as a profane game is in the 10th mandala of the Rig Veda. It is the Sukta number 34 and called by German Indologists Das Klagelied des Spielers. <clears throat> that means the gambler's lament. It is admired in German Indology and in Western Indology and hold in high esteem for its psychological depth, poetic beauty and artistic skill. The German Indologist Moritz Winternitz considered the poem to be the most beautiful among the non-religious poems of the Rig Veda. And Arthur Anthony MacDonnell says, considering that it is the oldest composition of the kind in existence all over the world, we cannot but regard this poem as the most remarkable literary product. In this uh, Sukta, number 34, in the Rig Veda, in the <clears throat> Dashama Mandala, we can exactly see how the game was structured, which were the rules, and how it was played. Um, the poem comprises the unhappy monologue of a desperate gambler, and laments the ruin brought on him because of his addiction to the akshas. And the gambling aksha, akshas, um, the, the gambling objects akshas are called the brown ones, dangling on high trees, sprung <clears throat> from high trees. <clears throat> and actually we can say definitely, they were made from the nuts of Terminalia bellirica vibitaca into an oblong shape with four scoring sides. These sides of this fruit, which I will show you a picture soon, were obvi obviously marked with dots as krita, four dots, treta, three, dvapara, two dots, and kali, one dot. And the upward showing dots, when these fruits were thrown, actually were victory or defeat. These, uh, uh, these akshas uh, were thrown into the irina, which is a long, <clears throat> a long um, let's say, a bowl or casket. And the game was a quick game of chance, of luck, no strategy, no tactics, just luck, with two or more players. And it was, as Rig Veda tells us, highly addictable. A game of chance is a game whose outcome is influenced by a randomizing device and actually you hardly have any influence on the game other than to cheat with actually Shakuni did. Shakuni cheated and I will try to show you how he cheated. So the Rig Veda I will not bore you with the whole, um, with the whole long um, supta. <clears throat> I will just tell you the important, uh, the important um, statements. Uh, the, the, the gambler is called the Kitava. And the gambler cannot stop gambling. And his mother-in-law hates him. Other carries the wife of him whose riches the die has coveted but he cannot stop gambling. Then um, the brown ones, the Babravo, these are the brown akshas, spoke, have spoken in the Sabah. The Sabah was already in the Rig Veda, the place where the men gambled. And again, in the Mahabharata, it's called the Sabah, which is actually a very special environment. And we can call it also assembly house. I will just go quicker through this. 
Now, very important, very important that in the Rigveda 1034, in, in uh, verse 8, we see that the number of these akshas is three pancha shaha. <clears throat> and this is um, 53. The Vedic word three pancha shaha is 53. So the game was played with 53 akshas. This is a very important point. I will come to this point later. Sorry, yes. Now, what is 53? 53 is 13 times 4 plus 1. So 53 was most probably the number of the akshas in the pit. And now it becomes complicated. Um, the krita was the winning grip. I will tell you later why. That is a number divisible by 4. And 13 times 4 is 52, and the one left was the Kali. Yeah, and uh, we will see how the game went in uh, the Mahabharata. Okay, this is all, this is still uh, something from the, uh, the gambler's wife is left forlorn and wretched. He has to leave um, his house. He goes by night unto the home of others, you know, uh, Yudhishthira had to go to the exile after losing the game. And Draupadi was humiliated in the Sabha because actually she, was, she had been at stake already. Let's leave this out. So let's uh, look at this. Um, definitely um, the uh, Roxbox Flora Indica has proven that the Sanskrit Vibhitaka is at the Terminalia Valerica. Now you see here these fruits. It is an, a tree native to India, very important tree. And you can see here this, that here you have these ridges and then the points there here. And if you throw them, the points are up and then you count together the points and then you either have a number divisible by four or not, or by four plus three, four plus two, four plus one. So, but this is not the end of the story. Later on, when this happened is uncertain, the Vibhita Kanats used in Vesic times were replaced by beans or peas. This ob obviously because the dots which must have been painted or marked on the Vibhita Kanats, they are found on the bees itself. Now, which kind of pea could be used for this gaming? And I think it is not definitely 100% sure, but as Aksha means I, we may presume that in post-Vedic age, the used objects were roundish and marked with a pupil-like dot. These objects, Objects are described as light, easily to grasp. Zugraha, they are smooth, shining, sleek, and slippery. And now they were thrown more or less in the air, fell to the ground, and then they were counted. And this is actually the game which happened in the Mahabharata. The number of the grasped akshas is either victory or defeat. So I think um, this very important bean, which is um, <clears throat> cultivated in India since ancient times, and which we in Germany call Augenbohne, or Uda Kuhbohne, could have been used, or at the court of Yudhishthira, maybe objects which have had beautiful done points on it, but in normal environment uh, in India, I think these uh, beans were used for the Aksha game. And why? It is called the cow or the kubone because you can see the prince of the cow on this as a sign, or so it was uh, conceived. So now I come to the game. The game can be reconstructed with the Rig Veda 10, 34 um, Sukta and uh, 
with other um, you know, with other Indian texts to speak about what they are mentioned in the Kama Sutra and in other places. And now uh, we can see how the game was going on. So um, the Akshad Yuta was a game in which a certain number of beams or objects were laying in the middle between two players. And one player is doing a grip He's, uh, he's taking a, sp a special, no any number, he, he don't know how many, out of this great number of akshas, throws them in the air, and now they are falling down, and they are counted when they are falling down. Now, um, the krita is the winning grip. This is a number of akshas divisible by four. So when Shakuni was uh, digging with his hand into this Aksha bowl on the Astara, and he threw the number into the air and they fell down and they were 12 or 16 or 20 or 24, he was winning because he had grasped a number divisible by four, Krita. And then he said, either he he said to Yudhishthira, Kritam, I have done it. Or he said, Jitam, I have won. So a Kali is a grip, a number of Akshas divisible by four plus one. This is 13, 17, 21, 25, and so on. This means many times four plus one. And the plus one is Kali. This is the reason we are in the Kali Yuga now, because this is the worst of all Yugas, and the Krita Yuga was the best. This was the worst grass, as the one plus Kali changed an even number, an orderly number, into an uneven odd one, which represented disorder and chaos. Why is the Krita the winning grip? And Kritam in uh, Vedic, as in Sanskrit, as in Vedic language, as in Sanskrit means done, or even perfectly done. See, for example, Sanskritam, the perfectly arranged language. Four is always the holy number in the Vedas. It presents order. The holy space of the Yagna with the four corners pointing to the four cardinal points. Everything cultural is based on four, the four Vedas, the four Varna, the four Ashrama, the four Yugas, and so on. So four was the perfect number representing order. You all know the Yugas. The Krita Yuga has four parts of Dharma and so on. Yeah, this is um, actually the interesting thing is um, that the grasps, grasps the grass or the glaha, are called according to the yugas, krita, tereta, dvapara, kali. That's very important. And here you see um, the yugas, uh, the satya yuga, krita yuga has four points, the treta three, the dvapara two, and the kali one. So ka, krita is the winner grass, kali the loser, this is a winner and this is a loser. And now I will show you why. The Treta and the Dvapara. A Treta is a Krita plus three. For example, 15, 19 or 23. The Treta was the loser grasp in correspondence with the Dvapara. The Dvapara is a Krita plus two. For example, 14, 18, 22 and so on, akshas. And because Shakuni is said to have won with even and as well as uneven grasps, we can assume that the uneven traitor is the winner grasp of Shakuni and the inactive player who was left with the Dvapara was the loser, that is Yudhishthira. Is it complicated? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so, but I can't help it. What to do? Also, let's see. The Treta and the Dvapara. <clears throat> uh, the Mahabharata informs us that Chakuni, who was winning incessantly, also grabbed uneven numbers of Akshas. 
Akshan hi drishtva, shakuner yatavat, kamu anuluman ayudu yudashcha. When Yudhishthira saw the Akshas falling, according to Shakuni's wish, uneven, odd, or even, he was despaired. That means when Shakuni was grasping an uneven, odd number at Treta, he was winning, as Yudhishthira was left with the lesser Dwapara remaining on the Astara, also in the valuation of the Yugas, the Treta is better than the Dwapara. It's all based on force. Now let's uh, resume again. <clears throat> Yudhishthira and Shakuni are sitting in the Sabha. In between is a so-called Astara, which is a cloth on which a certain number of Aksharas are laid. Now Shakuni has the first, as, <clears throat> as, the, as the guest, <clears throat> has the first grasp. Shakuni as the host has to grant him his adversary Shakuni the first laha. Shakuni grips into the akshas, throws them into the air, and they fall so in a way that he is the winner. Why? Because count, um, you know, they counted only the number which was which were grasped by the player. So the Kritas, I, I, um, I will repeat it again, are 16, 20, 24, 28. The Kalis are 17, 21, 25, 29. The Kritas are 19, 23, and the Dwaparas are 18, 22, 26. Now, when Shakuni has a Krita, Yudhishthira is left with the Kali. And whenever Shakuni has a Treta, Yudhishthira is left with a Dwapara. Yudhishthira is not moving at all. He is not touching the Akshas. Only Shakuni is touching the Akshas and winning and winning and winning. Because the winner takes the next Graha. This is the reason Shakuni is completely innocent. He does nothing. He's just the victim of Shakuni's winning. The number of akshas on the astara or spread, we don't know exactly. <clears throat> the Mahabharata is silent about the exact number, but we may strongly assume that the complete number of akshas was a high number divisible by four, let's say 80 plus one Kali. So the complete number of objects was 81 or 85. If a player, Shakuni, was grasping a krita, the victory grasp, the remaining number was in any case uneven or odd. X time, four plus one. And the loser, this is Yudhishthira, has the Kali without even touching the Akshas. Example. Let's say <clears throat> there are 85 akshas on the astara. These are 21 kritas plus one, adding up to 85. Whenever Shakuni grasps a krita, x times four, Yudhishthira is left with x kritas plus the kali, the evil one, and he is losing. Let's say Shakuni grasps five kritas, that is 20, Yudhishthira is a loser left with the remaining 65 akshas, that is 16 kritas plus one kali. This is because this is because the graha belonged to the active player, this is Shakuni, and the remaining akshas on the astara belong to the inactive player who had to wait for the result, that is Yudhishthira. If the active grasping player uh, would have a Kali, then the inactive player would have won because he is left with the Krita. But this never happened because Shakuni cheated. And I will show you now why, uh, how he cheated. Let's say the example number two, this is the Treta and Dwapara. 
let's say there are 85 akshas on the astara. These are 21 kritas plus one, the kali, adding up to 85. Whenever Shakuni grasps a traitor, say 15 akshas, 12 plus 3, Yudhishthira is left with 70 akshas. These are 70 kritas plus 2 and is the loser again. Behind this Aksha Dutta is mathematics in a high degree. And Mr. Avinash Gondalekar in Munich, who is a mathemat uh, who, who, is, uh, who knows mathematics, ha has shown me this. This chart is um, created by Dr. Avinash Gondaleka. Look at this. So complicated. Uh, the and, so, and so logic was the game played by Shakuni and Yudhishthira, a game which was invented about 2,000 years before Christ. It is very, very old. One of the oldest games in the world, the Aksha Dutta. And a completely mathematic system is behind it. So now what was Shakuni's trickery? Shakuni grasped a relative moderate, small and easily countable number of akshas, threw them in the air, counting their number. And when they were not divisible by four, <clears throat> he added a missing aksha, producing 16 instead of 15, or hiding one too much, producing 16 instead of 17. Therefore, Yudhishthira told him, Akshan Sahasrashahagraha grab the akshas in great numbers and not only small ones. Of course, Shakuni could cheat easier with a small number of akshas flying through the air. As birds fly, the hands of Shakuni, they are flying through the air, says the Mahabharata, grasping too quick for anybody's eye the one or two excess akshas or adding one or two missing ones may be hidden in his dress. So when he did not grasp a krita or a treta, he was cheating to create a krita or treta. What did Shakuni do? Tato jagraha shakuni stan akshan akshatatvavit Exactly this, then Shakuni grasped his akshas, he, the knower, wit of the essence of the akshas, said one to Yudhishthira. The akshas were thrown into the air as the frequently used verbs kship or some utkship proof, and often in the Mahabharata, they are compared to arrows, to arrows while the hand is the bow. So, um, what was uh, Shakuni's uh, trickery? When he grasped a Kali, and he could count it in the air, he removed the one and thereby produced a Krita. <clears throat> 17 minus one is 16. Having grabbed a loser's Dvapara, he either removed two Akshas, 18 minus two is 16, or depending on the situation, added two Akshas to create a Krita, 18 plus two is 20, this because the Dvapara stands in the middle of two Kritas. So either you add two or you take two Akshas away, then you have a Krita. Converting a Treta into a Krita made no sense, as Shakuni had won with a Treta anyway, as Yudhishthira is left with the lower Dvapara. Whoever has watched, a skillful magician on stage knows these tricks are possible. Among these tricks are sleight of hand manipulations. You can see them here on Western stages. And the normal eye is unable to captivate the, the hand movements of the magician to follow the actions. So Shakuni clearly was a so-called sleight of hand magician, known also as a prestidigitation or we say in French, we say légèrement, which refers to extraordinary fine 
motor skills of the fingers, or as we call it, tricks the fingers. All this he did, not as an evil person, but he wanted to protect his nephew Duryodhana. And only he could do it. Shakuni himself <coughs> compares the glahas, so the grasps of the game to arrows. The akshas flying through the air in a half circle is his bow, he says. And the gambling place where he is sitting is his ratta, the chariot. Here in the Mahabharata, Shakuni declares himself in a debate with Arjuna to be master not only of warfare, but the champion of the game in which his adversary Yudhishthira had had no chance at all. I don't see him evil. I see him a very interesting character. Remember, please, his name, Shakuni, means literally bird. Also known as Saubala, Shakuni was the king of Gandhara, the brother of Gandhari and hence Doryodhana Smatula, with certain ritual, um, I would say he had to look after his um, duties with ritual duties toward his nephew portrayed in the Mahabharata as extremely intelligent and bright, quick and shrewd, under circumstances cunning and devious, Shakuni is often credited as the mastermind behind the Kurukshetra war. He is one of the most fascinating characters in the Mahabharata, not evil, rather human. We all, I think, personally, are more or less in one way or the other, not always, but sometimes Shakuni. But the most of us, without his magic abilities. Who can read Yudhishthira Dharmaraja? Hardly anyone. The Mahabharata has created a character with which everybody can identify, be, who, who can be as virtuous as Yudhishthira, difficult. Shakuni that is closer to us, I think, or to me. The host of, as a host of the game, Yudhishthira had to grant Shakuni, out of generosity, the first graha, which was an advantage over the second player who had to wait for the result. So when Shakuni, by deceit, won and won and won and won, leaving Yudhishthira one curry after another, the later Yudhishthira was not only spellbound but paralyzed. Shakuni alone was active, while Yudhishthira was passive, and he remained the Dharma Raja with clean hands and clear conscience. He did nothing wrong at all, being not a gambler, because he just followed the ritual of the Rajasuya. So innocent Yudhishthira, in the game of uh, the Sabah, Shakuni was active, while Yudhishthira was condemned to passivity. And Yudhishthira was summoned to the contest as ritual demanded it, the Rajasuya Yagya. He could not decline and actually he do, did not do anything wrong or violating the Dharma, no. Actually, he fulfilled his Dharma as king. Yudhishthira remained innocent as he did not even touch the Akshas and remained the Dharma Raja in the logic of the Mahabharata. Thank you very much for your patience. That is, my, that is the end um, of my lecture. Thank you. One has to try playing this. Sorry? One has to try playing this. <laughs> yeah. Renata, ma'am, can you stop sharing your PPT? Yes, yes, of course. Yes, yes. I will, um, you know, this is, uh, this is the open uh, document. I will send um, the PDF uh, uh, to Okta so then she can distribute it to you. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's great. People were asking already. Yeah, yes, of course, of course. And also in, um, you know, in the... Let me see. I also wrote an article. Ah, okay. I wrote an article on this. Um, let me just, uh, 
I'm sorry, give me some time. I have it here. I have the, the bibliographical, um, sorry, 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 but I'm coming closer on the second. Uh, yeah, look here. You see in the, in the book, uh, Playing with the Past, the National Conference on Ancient and Medieval Board Games, I have written an article on this, named the Akshadyuta and the Mahabharata. But I also um, will uh, send this uh, PDF of this um, presentation to you. Yes. Yeah, no, uh, Yogini asked you to stop sharing. Stop sharing the screen. Okay, shall I, shall I leave it now? Yes, yes. Yeah. And you can talk to us. Hmm. Okay. Okay, now the floor is open. If you want to ask any questions, uh, yeah, uh, Yogini, will you read them out or Aparna? Uh, yes, ma'am, I'll read them. Just a minute. Um, I'm, why, why do I see my picture so big? This is not necessary. How can I? That's okay. Because you are talking, you are the main speaker, so you. Okay. Uh, so the first question is that, is there a direct reference to the Mahabharata where it mentions that Draupadi laughed and mocked Duryodhan? Yes. So there is a direct reference. Oh, this, uh, you can easily find it. You can easily find it. Okay. Yes, it is, it is mentioned in the Mahabharata. Actually, this, um, um, I think... Um, when when uh, Duryodhana visited uh, the palace of um, in the in, in the in the prasta of Yudhishthira, he um, he, he couldn't um, he saw crystal for water and water for crystal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, actually, the Mahabharata sees the humiliation of Draupadi um, as a result of Duryodhana's hate, of course. Yes. Somebody here has given a wrong uh, reference. There is the story of Dadiche giving his backbone to make the dice that will roll according to Shakuni's request. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that is not Dadiche, that is Jarasandha. The, the Asura Jarasandha, uh, the King Jarasandha's bones. I know this is another, um, also, uh, you know, in some uh, places in the Mahabharata, it is said um, that the bones, um, the, you know, they, they were falling, the Akshas were falling according to, um, uh, to uh, Shakuni's will because he used a magic spell. Uh, but this is a second, uh, it's a second story. It is not necessary. Actually, he was a traditional um, Aksha Tatva bit who was an experienced gambler. Uh, but how does this justify Yudhishthira gambling away his wife? Um... Yudhishthira actually did, did not a uh, gamble. Um, I, I, as I told you, it was not a, 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 a game of fun or entertainment. He was, um, he was obliged uh, to gamble to distribute his wealth. This is what he did because as a, he had to do it as a part of the Ratasuya Yagna. Actually, but Shakuni in the beginning had the plan to not let him out. If Chakuni would not have cheated, at a certain point, Yudhishthira would have won. And then he could, even then, he could distribute wealth and presents and the stakes. Uh, but Chakuni did not let him out. And so not coming out of the game because always losing, Yudhishthira could, could do nothing else. Uh, He's not... Yeah, so there is one more question that like Varun is saying that uh, I have heard that Shakuni had a scene of revenge as his parents were imprisoned and killed by Duryodhana's father. So he vowed to destroy the family. Yeah, yes, yes, true. There are many, many, um, yeah, yeah, yes. Actually, it's a complicated, the Mahabharata is a very complicated story. Yes, yes, but you are right. I know, I know. But I think um, the most important point was that the Matula, um, the Mamu, today you say Mamu, has a very 
special um, relationship with his um, sister's son. And this is the reason Shakuni somehow had to act. He tried in the beginning to, to tell you to Ryodana, why, are, why do you envy so much and let him be happy and no, but he could not. And so then Shakuni helped him, which is quite understandable on a human, on a human base. Are there any references to women playing Akshay Dutta in the ancient texts? Sorry? Are there any references of women playing Akshay Dutta in ancient texts? No, no, no. The opposite. Um, the opposite. The Akshay Dutta uh, was uh, not allowed. Um, uh, women were not allowed to play it. Um, in the Sabha, uh, in the Rig Veda, um, it is clear. It is just a place for men, for relaxing. Um, women were not playing. Actually, the problem was that the Aksha Dutta uh, was very, very addicti addictive. When you started to play, you could not stop. And uh, women, they are not allowed to make stakes and to win. No, and there is no way, no way of women playing this Aksha Dutta anywhere in ancient India. The only hint, uh, maybe in the Kama Sutra. Um, where um, men were playing different um, board games uh, with the ganikas, the courtesans. But the respectable women uh, never played. Okay. I, I mean, it's the same in Germany. Uh, we have a lot of um, um, addicted persons, uh, spielsüchtig, and the number of men outnumbers the, the addicted women by, 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 I think, 80 to 20. And it's so addictive that, uh, behavior in, in, the gamb in gambling seems to be a male thing, generally. In Japan, it's the, it's the same and so on, yeah. yeah. Has anyone really tried playing Akshay the way you have explained? And today it's not played anymore. I, I don't think so. You can play it. Um, it's very interesting, um, but um, to cheat is uh, difficult, as Shakuni did. You can do it. I mean, you just take these beans, let's say 83 beans in a box or on a, on a, on a spread, a starter, and I grip and throw the actions I have in my hand and I count them and then I'm the winner or the loser. The, the, the whole stuff is interesting only if you give high stakes. And um, the, in the Mahabharata, uh, the, you know, the, um, the gambler's lament in this uh, uh, sukta, it is said um, that gold and uh, valuables and cows and whatever were at stake. And mostly men could not stop if they started gambling. So even they are said to have lost, um, as you say in German, a uh, haushof und vibe, um, house and your, your house and your, your stable and your family and everything. If he had to distribute his wealth like this way, why is the distribution of wealth to those deserving done through Brahmanas and others? Uh, we are talking about the game actually, Akshay Yuta, and uh, how it, it was really played. The focus is not on the, these little stories of Mahabharata, which could be in the original, which may not be in the original. This is, uh, for, this is an instruction for all the people who are asking questions. So I would request all of you to uh, limit your questions to the game itself, how the game is played. If you have any queries about the mathematics of it, or I think we should go ahead. I mean, um, it seems to be complicated, but it's actually it's not. not. No, it is not. It looks like. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, but it seems, uh, but it is not uh, because um, it is everybody, okay, you have to learn it like any game and the rules. Uh, but just under, I think the basic understanding is very simple, uh, that you win whenever you have a number of akshas divisible by four, 20. And the other player is then left 
with any number of critters plus one. We do not, um, of course, we, we, we must not um, count the numbers which remain on the Astara because we count only them we have taken out and then the remaining number is, is clear. And you, the only rule is a, a Krita over Kali and Treta over Dwapara. That's very easy. You need about 10 minutes um, if you play it to understand it, it's, it's simple. But it's very, um, it's very prone uh, to cheating. You add one or take one away and so on. And, um, you know, in the it's simple compared to chess, which is also an Indian invention. Mm. Is that this game was um, is that this game was played other than Indian territory, like in different no, places? No, no. Not in Gandhara? I don't know. This, uh, sorry, I don't know. Um, you know, um, exact, the problem is that all German Indologists um, who studied the Mahabharata and the game uh, gave wrong descriptions of the game. They thought it was something like Pachisi and so on. Uh, but definitely it was not because in the Mahabharata it is clearly it is clear that you had a spread of cloth embroidered and astara it's called and you had akshas there's no mention of shara or something shara is um, uh, is the name for for those uh, little little figures in 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 pachisi you don't have it clearly clearly if you know the game of Akshayuta, as it is described in the Rig Veda, then you definitely can see, aha, this is the game played in the Mahabharata, of course, because being the Akshayuta, being a part of the Rajasuya. And the Rajasuya of uh, um, Yudhishthira just happened. It's clear, it's very clear. There is no question of dice made of somebody's bone or this person's nothing. That's okay. That's uh, that's um, um, uh, we, we, of course the Mahabharata is the fantasy is so great, yes, and it's it's very fantastic things and mm -hmm. mythic things. But you don't need this. The, the the game is clear. It's very clear. How does the game come to an end? Yeah, this is a very interesting question. When does the game come to an end? Right, right. Actually, um, it, it, was of, uh, it was possible uh, to say before uh, that we are doing only 20 grasps or something like this. You could end it like this. In the case, yeah, very, very good question of, you, of yours. Because when the game uh, was played in a profane environment, um, the people before um, agreed Okay, we will do 20 or 40 grips and then the game is over and then somebody has won and one has lost and you know the, the stakes are distributed. But if you do and in the ritual game, actually there was no end to it because you just I had to show that I'm giving this away, I'm giving you jewels away, I'm giving the horses away, I'm going and Shakuni did not give him a chance. Uh, to, to end it, Yudhishthira could not end it as a loser because he was the loser. And um, the other possibility was um, only the winner can end the game. Oh. The loser has no possibility of ending the game. This is the same with poker. If you are playing poker and you are the loser and you want to end the game, this is very, very dishonest. If a strain of luck and then you can be generous and can say, okay, I have, uh, I have gained so much money now, we leave it and leave it with this, yeah? So my, uh, my, my, my uh, luck, uh, I had enough luck. But the loser in the Akshadyuta, in the Sabha, in the ritual game could not end it. Only the king, uh, when the king, if there had not been a cheating, Yudhishthira, must have been the winner sometimes. And then he could have said, okay, let's end it now. I give this away and this and it's peaceful. But as he was only losing, he had no chance of ending the game without being dishonest 
and petty and ungenerous. So he had to give away even Draupadi. There was no man in the Mahabharata as dharmic as Yudhishthira. And it's a complete misunderstanding of Western Indology to see Yudhishthira as a gambler. He was not. He slipped into it innocently and couldn't get out of it. And Shakuni was merciless. The half of his nephew. Oh, uh, somebody is asking, uh, could the uh, speaker explain what is gra grasp? It's graha? graha means grabbing. So grab um, if, if I look, uh, I, if I have a bowl of, if I have a bowl of, uh, let's say of, uh, of this akshas, I grab in. And I don't know how many akshas I have in my fist. That's graha. From uh, the Sanskrit word graha. Graha or glaha in the Mahabharata, it's called sometimes glaha. The graha is the grip, grab into it. Yeah. Yeah? Or, or let's say you have a bowl of rice and you take a fistful out. And this, is, uh, this is the grip. And you can count the little objects then you have in your hand. You yeah. can count it. You can count it. Yeah. And this, was, this is the reason those um, akshas, in the time of the Mahabharata must have been very small, like this little bean, uh, because you have to grip many, let's say like, like uh, lentils or dal or something, 20 or 40 or something like that. How can, um, so basically how can the black eyed beans have values of two, three and four points or were they like, were, like did people make further eyes on it? No, 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 no. no. Uh, when we had, when in, in, in the times of, uh, of the Rig Veda, um, they made dots and one uh, Vibhita Kanat had different dots. Later on, every Aksha, as every bean mm. is one Aksha. So when I have, uh, let's say 16 in my hand, this is 16 Aksha, Akshas and the number is 16. I think um, at the court of the Mahabharata, they might have used beautiful little objects of ivory painted with something, uh, but actually it is not necessary even uh, to have a mark on it because the bean itself it's is a unit. Aksha. Yeah, yeah. One aksha is one unit of anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there a range of dates for the <laughs> game, like the earliest mention and the most recent, recent mention of it? Sorry, I, I didn't understand it exactly. So is uh, just the court of objects? No, so is there a range of dates like for the game, the earliest mention and the recent most mention? Uh, date? Can, yes, can we will not be them? able to um, uh, decide the dates of the Vedas and the Mahabharata. So till then we cannot really say anything about the it. dating. The dating? Yes. Actually, this is a, a, a difficult question. I'm in Germany, actually, I'm a German Indologist. And Indology has a long tradition of, um, a long tradition in Germany. The Germans were amazed 200 years back when they got notice of the Vedanta and of Sanskrit. And the Germans were great admirers of Indian culture. So Indology in Germany is very strong. Uh, but of course, it's a science and we try to uh, date um, correctly. And in Germany, at the moment, we believe um, that the eldest parts of the Rig Veda are about 2000 BC. So that the 4000 years back. So there are Indologists, they say, okay, if the Rig Veda um, appeared about 2000 BC before Christ, um, the actual uh, formation of the Vedic hymns was much older. Uh, so the culture represented in the Rig Veda is already 3000 B B uh, BC. And the Mahabharata actually is believed um, to have come into existence in between um, 300 BC to 200 AD. In the time of Kalidasa under the Guptas, 
and the Mahabharata was already in the form we have it today. So um, the Indian culture, of course, is much elder uh, than any European culture. Any European culture. Is this game played on other occasions too? Like other than Raj, Suya, Yagna or something? No. Also, uh, India has a long tradition of, of, of gaming. I mean, actually, um, I also have um, tried to prove um, that the worldwide played backgammon actually came from India. It's the Indian game of the Shara, the Shara game. And um, the backgammon was a war game in India in which um, the infantry had to go uh, through the enemy's part and the own part. And it was actually a strategic game. It came, it came from India. So India has many, many, many games. No other culture has as many games as India. And of course, the kings of the king of games, the Chaturanga the chess was invented in India. There is no doubt about this. Whoever doubts this also will believe that the earth is flat. So the Chaturanga is from India. Um, the backgammon is from India, uh, snakes and letters is from India, the Pachisi is from India, we have it in Germany, Mensch ärgere dich nicht, we call it Mensch ärgere dich nicht, um, this comes via the British um, to, uh, to Europe, so actually everything came, all the games come from India, and you know the chess, you know when Harsha Vardana had his court um, in the 7th century, um, the delegation from China came, and uh, they took the, the Sankhya philosophy and all this and the mathematics and astronomy from India to China. And in this time, the chess went also from India to China. And India, on the other hand, has no influences from anywhere so wherever. The, the whole Indian culture is just an outcome of India. We don't have foreign influences um, into India from Greek, so that's not true. It's a European propaganda. It's not true. India is a India is a special a special culture, and it's also because of its geography. You have uh, you have oceans and you have Himalaya, and it's a very separated island. It's actually an island, and the culture here is very old and very continuous. Very continuous. Yeah. Aparna, would you like to? No, I think we are coming to an end. Aparna, would you like to? Just say a few words about uh, our uh, coming uh, December conference on games. Just mention it for the audience benefit. Yeah, I actually, I got I got notice that uh, on 12th and 3rd, uh, 13th December. Yes. There will be a video conference on games, right, Mukta? Right. Yeah. right. Ma'am, yeah. Aparna ma'am is not there here. Maybe okay. her net. She has some network. Okay. So so we we are planning an online conference on uh, ancient games of India. Mm, there will be board games and there will be some ancient games also. So yeah. just informing everybody, we will be giving all the details and uh, sending out uh, everything, so all the details on social media and of course, <laughs> mm, yeah. so we will have fun then. Mm. By then, I, I hope our team plays Akshadyuta somewhere and we will do the video recording and show it to you and maybe we will do something better than that. Yes, yes, yes. Because and I would say, I would say you the playing would, uh, would matter, you know, it will look different. That will be fun. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Thank you so much. No, it's a pleasure.